earth, fire, wind, water, heart, go planet. With your powers combined, I am Pixar Planet. Pixar Planet, full of heroes. The bad movie count is nearly zero. Most of the movies are really good. How does this one measure up to them? No, I can't rhyme a single word. So let's see how Elemental measures up to the rest of the Pixar library. Let's get this before it's messy. Elemental was written and directed by Peter Son, who had something to do with The Good Dinosaur, which is a movie, honestly, I totally forgot about. And he's been involved in other Disney and Pixar projects and has had three other writers. I don't really know why four writers were needed for this movie, but the other writers had something to do with television projects, animated series. One of them, John Hoberg, Hoberg, also had something to do with all that. I remember all that, that Nickelodeon blog. That was my shit, as the kids used to say. I am 42 years old trying to talk like this. There is something really, really wrong with me. So... This involves various elements, I know, in a movie called Elemental. How goddamn weird. There's Elemental City, where you have Fireland, you have Waterland, you have Tree, Earthland, Clouds, Windland, and you, know, you just have all these elements living in pockets that they, they do interact, but honestly, elements aren't supposed to mix. And of course, that is our story, because we center around the characters of Ember, voiced by Leah Lewis, and Wade Ripple, who's the water guy, by the way, just in case you didn't get that subtle goddamn meaning right there with Wade Ripple. Mamodu Athi. I am really certain that I butchered that. I do apologize. These are the central characters. We do have Ember's parents that emigrated from uh, you know, a far off land where basically something really, really bad happened. They decided to leave and make a new life in element, you know, in this element world. And they're just trying to fit in. Father's got a business called the fireplace fitting for, you know, flame based creatures or flame based, um, you know, elemental creatures as it were. And from there, we have a movie where eventually Wade gets involved in this whole thing because he's a city inspector and he falls for Ember, but these elements can't mix and there's no way these two crazy kids from two different walks of life and being two different elements can ever fall in love. And if you think that, you have never seen a Pixar movie. Now, I will say this much. When I saw the trailer, I'm like, okay, this looks all right. Pixar, Disney offerings, you know, Disney, Pixar, however you want to say it mostly, mostly, are great. I loved Soul. I loved Turning Red. I thought those were phenomenal efforts, and those were put out on Disney+. Plus. Elemental obviously had quite a marketing campaign. It seemed like, you know, the kids are going to love it, you know, and families might end up enjoying it. And you know what? While I don't think this is going to be a massive success for them, I think they're going to make a pretty good profit. And this also turns out to be a cut above some offerings from Disney and Pixar. I wasn't so sure how to feel about it at first. This isn't the absolute pinnacle of Disney and Pixar. There are issues. Some of the jokes land a little flat. And while there are good expressions on the various characters, it's cool to see these various people. But there's also a lack of stakes. Meaning no meat is being cooked in this. No, in all seriousness, there's a lack of stakes. Like, there's not really an element of danger beyond... Um, Ember needing to control her temper, possibly take over the family business, and Wade ba ha has had his own issues, and he's bouncing between jobs, and after falling for Ember, he finds new meaning, she has to find new meaning, and realize that she has more potential in just running her family shop, and honestly, it, it drew me in. Now, at first, I wasn't sure how to take this, and again, it's a notch below some, you know, a few other ones. I wouldn't put this up there with Turning Red and Soul, but I would put this somewhere below it, but not too far below, because they got me. They got me with this story. They got me to where you actually got me to tear up, and thank you, Pixar. Thank you very much for doing that. Fortunately, nobody was around me in the theater. I mean, it was 3.30 in the afternoon when I saw this, and there, God, I think there was maybe 15, 20 people in there. But it ends up actually being pretty entertaining. 
and quite emotional. There is one point where I'm like, boy, this is going to be a real goddamn downer. And was it? Well, you have to wait till the spoiler section. But the world does look vibrant. There's, you know, a lot of work and a lot of detail put into some of the characters. But it also feels safe at the same time. While it does have that emotional grip as things go on and the relationship between Ember and Wade continues to develop, there are a few issues. Um, again, the lack of stakes and all that, but it's definitely not a bad movie. It is a good movie with some great moments in it, and I recommend you guys check out Elemental. I mean, I rushed home from the theater because I'm actually in between movies. I'm going to go watch The Blackening shortly after this, and... I just decided I want to come home and talk about, it. Uh, obviously, Wade being a water, you know, uh, you know, element, he's prone to emotions, and, you know, that sometimes that comedy works, sometimes, I don't know, sometimes it felt a little bit forced, and I'm not faulting the voice actors, it was just like, I think the story had too many, had too many people involved, I was like, you know, four people writing this damn thing, I think you probably could have had two, not that I'm against writers getting paid well, they should be paid well, as right now the writer's strike's still going on, which is bullshit, writers deserve to be paid fairly, but sometimes you can have too many cooks in the kitchen, and that actually is what just keeps us from being in the absolute pinnacle, or at the absolute pinnacle of Disney and Pixar offerings. Overall though, Good with great moments, so I recommend you guys check it out. So I'm going to get into spoilers. It is in theaters. I wouldn't be too surprised if this ends up being on Disney Plus by August, but I think it'll do pretty well at the box office. It is opening up on a weekend against The Flash, and you have Across the Spider-Verse still making a whole lot of money, so we'll see. Nevertheless, getting into spoilers, so that's your warning right there. Check out Elemental in theaters while it lasts. 3, 2, 1, spoilers! Okay, so... Basically, um, yeah, Ember and Wade do end up getting together. Let me just end up saying that. But it takes its time with this. Ember has a reason why she is against the idea of, you know, being with another element. And it's not that she doesn't think that he's a good guy. It's also how ingrained it has been in her psyche. Yeah, there's the classism and the racism aspects of this movie that pretty much at times are basically so goddamn right in your face that you practically expect certain people to be wearing white hoods, but everybody's different. Everybody has their own opinions, and fire people tend to be looked down upon the most. Now, at one point, um, early on in the movie, it becomes obvious that Ember has a temper just lashes out, especially working in retail. And trust me, I get it. I absolutely get it. Having worked in retail for years and years and years. What ends up happening, she has to learn to control her temper. At one point, she unleashes her temper while she's trying to run the shop during a big sale at this little knick-knack shop, and she causes a leak. Well, these water, these pipes aren't supposed to have water. That's where Wade comes in, and Wade's like, I have to write all these violations, and he's going to send this thing in. Ember chases him down. There's this funny moment where she tries to create fire and stop him. And then um, Wade ends up sending the reports in, but then stops his, you know, the middle management guy and says, hey, wait, don't pass the savings on to them. Hand me the reports. And then Ember gets angry because Wade tries telling this guy about some stuff that Ember shared with him. Like she doesn't want her father to lose the shop, lifelong work, all that but Ember doesn't want to share her emotions. He can't control her emotions. Ends up setting the whole thing on fire. And he says, well, it looks like I'm going home early today. And said, and puts the report in there. And then Wade is like, hey, wait a second. Let me talk to my boss. So let's do this. Let, let's, you know, let's go to this game. Let's go to this particular game. Like, it's a, it's a cloud-based basketball game. Uh, which is actually kind of funny. I wish they would have done more stuff like that. No Mallow in this. Because we're not Super Mario RPG. But Ember witnesses. Wade channeling his emotions and seeing this one player that's really, really down because this uh, particular character had a sick mother. <clears throat> and he's trying to inspire him. That, you know, we love you, we love you. You know, it, it, uh, Lutz, I believe, is the name of the character. A lot of stuff going on in my head here. Um, something that pertains to the movie, but get them all inspired, and this, and this character feels the love and, you know, wins. And that proves that elements can get along and can help each other and everything. And the boss decides. Okay, I'll tell you what. You help my team win. I'm a bit. It's like, how about this? You find you find the source of this leak because this, there's this water leak somewhere. Something's happening. Something's going on here. Find it. Find it by Friday, and all's forgiven. Otherwise, you guys lose your shop. 
Okay, fair. And I mean, that's really about the only element of danger because they managed to find where the leak is after a bit, after some research, after all this stuff. And they put some sandbags in. And then, well, let's just say even between Ryan the shop, hanging out away, trying to help him, or trying to, you know, trying to not get with him, but obviously get with him because it's pretty obvious what's going to happen. Ember realizes, shit, we have to make more sandbags. The sandbag thing doesn't exactly hold. And then she finds out what she can do. She got really, you know, angry, all fired up in the sand, and she was able to turn the sand into glass. So she decides to make a barrier in this big hole, this big hole area where these cruise ships are coming along, the water overflow is coming down and coming through that. She decides, I'm going to, you know, make a barrier of glass. And she does. And then she meets Wade's family. That was actually led to some pretty good moments, um, including one moment that got, I was like, the moment the movie got me, was when they were playing the water people were playing the crying game wade's family was playing the crying game and ember's like well i've never cried and then he tells her some stuff about how oh <laughs> about how you know somebody like the you know the, how he really does care about somebody and you know he's that that certain spark has just done something to him and helped him open his eyes you know because he lost his dad early in his life um, and that was something that has haunted him. But Ember has helped, you know, reignite that spark. And that, she got her to tear up. And it got me. And I, that's weird because I don't generally cry at movies. But Pixar just has that right way of doing things. And that was nice. And then she's still debating about all this. The mother has seen that Ember went in to Wade's, you know, uh, to his mother's uh, water palace apartment deal. And there's this funny thing where the doorman's like blot himself out and the mother's trying to do this and the mother's like exhausted and the doorman's like this, like, yeah, you know, so we're not as old, we're not as young as we used to be. <laughs> and then it's obvious that Ember actually cares about Wade. And uh, the mother does a little side business while the father's running the shop. The father's getting very tired though, he's coughing up smoke, not doing all that well. The mother does love readings. And Ember interrupted one of those. You know, not meaning to. She wanted to beat her father's delivery record. So eventually, Wade shows up. He's going to be the, you know, he uh, pretends to be a food inspector instead of the health inspector, or instead of, you know, the violation inspector, building inspector. And there's, that leads to the comedy of eating the hot food. And there's this bubble burst and it, it screams and stuff like that. And there's some good comedy and some good emotional punch uh, to it. And Ember's just still tentative. And then there's this funny moment, or actually a really sweet moment early on, or later on, where Ember talked about how they weren't, a, you know, she wasn't able to see this particular flower at this, you know, um, like this garden university or whatever, because fire people weren't allowed there, and then the thing flooded, so now she can't go there. The boss, because... Ember is able to fix the leak. The leak, by the way, is starting to crack. The glass is starting to crack because even though Ember's really good, eh, it's not exactly working all that well. That being said, during that time where Ember was at her, or at Wade's uh, family thing, she fixed the vase and made it all great. And she and the mother said, I know somebody who has a great glass blowing, you know, forming place. It's at the university. It's far away, an internship, but it could work out for you. And that's something she's waffling on because the dad wants to leave her the business just to keep it in the family. I mean, he's not trying to get her to squash her dreams, but that's what she thinks. That's what her temper is telling her. Her temper is telling her she doesn't want to run the shop. And she's weighing that between wanting to stay with her family and wanting to go do her own thing. And then the boss, who's a giant cloud creature, straight out of that land in uh, uh, Super Mario, Super Mario 64, if you get it. No, not Super Mario 64. Super Mario, um, the RPG version on the 64. Yeah, that one. The Paper Mario game. That's what I was trying to say. She forms this air bubble thing where Wade's taking her down, you know, a fire creature in a bubble, 20 minutes of air. She's able to see this flower, all this great stuff, and then the bubble starts uh, shrinking. <laughs> and she's freaking out. She's going to evaporate. And he pushes her through. They manage to just get out. And then they're finally able, it's an emotional part, part they touch and you know, all this. And then Ember's like, wait, no, 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 this can't happen. Like, I have to, like, you don't know me, this kind of stuff. And she's freaking out because she's torn. She knows that she loves him, but she's not sure what's going, you know, she's not sure what's going on in her head. 
Then the dam bursts and things are really, really going south. The dad's not necessarily all that happy because the dad found out about um, Wade and that Ember's temper actually caused the goddamn destruction. So she's upset and he's upset. Wade's upset because, she, you know, he obviously can tell she loves him, but he's got a broken heart now. He's going to go off. The dam bursts. Ember does everything she can to try and save um, the blue flame. There's this blue flame thing in this lantern that the dad carried over from the fatherlands. That's a good one. And what ends up happening is her and Wade end up trapped in this room where basically it, she seals up these leaks so she doesn't get hurt. But they're going to go through this particular area while everything's collapsing around them, all these buildings. And... The thing traps in, and now it's too hot for him, and he evaporates. They hug, he evaporates, and great, Wade's dead. That's great for the kids. And I was like, fuck, why am I invested in this? Why the fuck am I tearing up over a goddamn animated water character? And then what ends up happening is she, you know, all upset, and then talking about how she did love him, and then suddenly you hear Wade cry. The condensation's in the goddamn ceiling, and everybody compliments him and he falls in his bucket. He reforms. They end up happy together. Go off to the internship. And it's really good. It's a really good... It draws you in. I mean, again, it's it's not the best Pixar Disney movie ever. It has its issues. Little, I mean, not necessarily pacing, but just a lot of it seems the same. But it's vibrant enough that it's going to please the kids and please some adults. So I'll give it an A minus, A minus for sure. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ricklin. I'll see you soon.